In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Excel Advanced Filter to help you solve real world problems. We're going to use a fictitious customer orders data set to answer various business questions. And I'm going to show you how to send advanced filter reports to the same sheet, a different sheet within the same workbook and a completely different workbook. Now, these are some very useful skills that have helped me a lot in my career. So I hope you enjoy them. And hey, don't forget to subscribe below. Let's get into it. OK, so the paradigm we're going to work within is we're pretending we're a business that's shipping products, this particular business. And we're going to pretend that the current month is June 2020. So the question I want answered is what orders have we received but not yet shipped out to customers? So in order to do that, if we look at the data here and don't forget this spreadsheet will be available to download. Links will be below and possibly on this video. So what we got to do is we got to find orders not yet shipped. So in order to do that, what we need to do is find orders where the shipped date column is blank. So you can see, for example, here on the data, we've got an order date. So for example, this they, these items here were ordered on the 24th of March, but as of June, they have not yet been shipped because the shipped date is blank. Well, how we can get a report to cover that is we'll just take the shipped date and we're going to make that a criteria. Do control V there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take all the information. I'm going to create an extract range here. So what I'm going to do now is for items that have not yet shipped, we want items with blank in the shipped date column. And in order to do that, you press the uh, single quote key and press the equal sign. So it's basically just going to have an equal sign in the cell. So what we got to do is I'm going to select the whole range and I'm going to range it with the name database. Now with the range name database, what should happen is that the advanced filter knows automatically that this data is the data range. And I'm going to name this with criteria and I'm going to range name now the extract area. Now notice you only range name the headers for the extract area. You don't paint the data underneath it because if you do that, you're going to restrict your output. You don't want to create an extract area like this because what you're actually doing then is you're restricting the extract to that size. So when you're range naming your extract area, you just do the headers. If I go to the data menu and I do advanced, because I chose those range names, the dialog box is automatically filled out. And now I'm going to click OK. This is the report of items not yet shipped. So we have these items that are two months out of date, these items that are three months out of date, and these items that are four months out of date. So again, let's pretend that the current month is June 2020 and I'm really only interested in orders that were placed prior to May and have not yet been fulfilled. So what we would do in that instance is I would get the order date again and I would place the order date next to the shipped date and I'd put into that less than uh, 01-05, it's UK date format I have to use here, uh, slash 2020. And so that's less than the 1st of May 2020. So if we now go to the advanced filter, again, we can see that everything's filled out uh, already for us because of data, criteria, and extract range names. So we click on copy to another location, but what we've got to do is repaint the um, criteria filter, the criteria, mainly because we've adjusted the criteria, I've added in a new column. So the order date. So the criteria now is P1 to Q2. So if I click OK now, you can see we have got just the orders that haven't been fulfilled in March and April. Now I could also do a slightly different query and say, hey, I'm only interested in orders that uh, weren't fulfilled to Seattle. So if I just get Seattle and I'll copy that to here, and I'll copy ship city over the order date, control V ship city. And now I'll do advanced filter again, copy to another range. Don't have to make any alterations this time because the range names are the same and click OK. So here we've got all orders that were not fulfilled for Seattle. 
and you can see we've got chai, coffee, green tea, crab meat, and they were three in March and one in May. Now, if I, in addition, wanted a list of orders not shipped to Seattle and orders not shipped to Chicago, what I've got to do is that's an or query because I want Seattle or Chicago. I type Chicago in under Seattle. But what I've also got to do is put in the same criteria here. Otherwise, if I just executed this query, what would happen is I'd get orders not fulfilled to Seattle and all orders for Chicago. But no, I want orders not fulfilled to Seattle and not fulfilled to Chicago. So now we do the query again, advanced filter. This time I've again got to modify the criteria because I've added a row. So you can see it's only painting these two rows, but I need it to paint those. So now I click OK. You can see we've got one order that wasn't fulfilled for Chicago as well on the 24th of May. Now for the next query, I want to know what's the total order value and order quantity by customer. Now note, yes, you could do this via the uh, pivot table if you wanted to. However, I'm imagining this as being part of maybe a customized macro or whatever of whatever reason you don't want to use the pivot table. If you've got a macro, you can probably get results a lot faster than via manipulating a pivot table. And seeing as we're set up for the advanced filter, you don't necessarily want to be mixing your ways of doing things. So that's why we're going to do it now via the advanced filter. It is a bit more work, but once you've put it into a macro, it's a lot quicker. So let's do it right now. So what we're going to want is order value by customer. Now the criteria in this instance isn't going to be used to actually do anything, but with advanced filters, you always have to have a criteria range. So just to prove that, I'm going to put in a nonsensical uh, criteria, something we're not using at all. I'm going to use the order date as criteria. So I'll get that and I'll stick order date there. And what we're going to want is we're going to want the customer name, the ship address and their ship city. So I'm going to copy those and I'm going to put those on sheet two. I'm going to just drag these up. So to make things easier, again, I'm going to range name criteria and extract on this sheet as well. This time I'm going to have to actually use the menu because we've already set them up as workbook names elsewhere. And I'm going to call this criteria and I'm going to set the scope to sheet two because that's where we are. And I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to range name the extract area, define name, and I'm going to call this extract. And again, I need to make this sheet two because that's where we are. OK, so now if I do data advanced filter, you can see that the criteria and the extract range are highlighted. However, we've lost the data range because we're on a different sheet. So, for example, if I go to the earlier sheet and I do this again, I do advanced filter, you can see it's pointing to everything. So it knows it's on sheet one and it's given us the criteria for sheet one and the extract for sheet one and the data range. But you lose that when you go to another sheet or to another workbook. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just call sheet one data. And don't forget, we've already range named this data as being database. So if I go to the advanced filter again now and I do copy to another location. Now this time, because we want summaries, by customer, I'm going to do unique records only. But to get at the data, we know the sheet is called data. So I'm going to do data, exclamation mark, database, and extract. And we've got our unique list of customers. Okay, I'm going to type quantity and I'm going to type value. What we're going to do now is we're going to use sum if. But what I'm also going to do to make the sum if formula a lot easier is I'm going to convert the data range to a data table. So what you want to do is press your click on your data range and press your control asterisk key, which is the equivalent of current region select special, which as I've shown in the previous video, if you press your F5 key, go to special, it's the current region you want. And that's the same as control asterisk. With your data range selected, press Ctrl and T to convert it into a table. Click OK to select the range. And now Excel automatically takes you to the table design element of the ribbon menu. And what I'm going to do here is click in table name and I'm just going to call it table data. OK, I'm just going to change the text to black so I can read it a lot easier. 
So what we're going to want is we're going to want the extended price and we're going to want the quantity in order to get this summary. So the data table makes things a lot easier to navigate with the SUMIF formula. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to be looking up customer and from customer we want to sum the quantity field and we're going to want to sum the price field. So if I click on the quantity and I do equals sum if table data and open brackets and just type customer because that's the column that we're summing and the criteria what we're looking up in customer is going to be the name here to the left and then I put in my quote again and what field are we going to be summarizing that's going to be the quantity field so table data open square brackets QTY close square brackets close parenthesis and now we have the quantity column summarized so I can just drag that down and we've got the summary now the thing is this is very easy to put into a macro so if you you could have a macro button there and just click refresh refresh or you could have a routine that gets various reports like this range values and converts the values to a converts formulas to a value copies them elsewhere and builds you lots of different sub reports depending on what you want so if you want the value i'm again going to do sum if and i'm going to type uh, table data and open brackets for customer and you can see it's uh, even uh, suggesting the names that i'm going to want so double click on that customer and the person what we're looking up again is karen toe which is the well column a and now the sum range is again table data and once you type table data the uh, intellisense helps you by showing you the columns that you've set up in the table which is quite nice and it's extended price close the square brackets and close the parenthesis okay and this dragging down as i said can all be done via code if you want via macro code put in commas and let's just format it so it's nice and you can always put in a sum so we know our order value is 2,942 units and I guess we've sold 68,137 units it may seem a little bit more work than using an advanced filter but there are times when you would want to do this and this isn't using any more memory etc and it's keeping your spreadsheet clean I'll now show you an algorithm that you may want to use in macros, but I'm going to do it manually. So say for example, you wanted to build reports in separate workbooks for each of the uh, states that you're shipping to. So it's for every state that you've shipped products to, you want a separate workbook report. Let's look at how you do that manually, and then we'll look at doing it in code. So what I'm first of all going to do is I'm going to add a tab and I'm going to give the tab the name cities. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a criteria called ship city and an extract area called ship city. Now as again with the criteria it could be any name because we're not actually going to use a filter but what I want first of all is a unique list of all cities that we've shipped to. So I'm going to do data and advanced filter again data exclamation mark database that's the source range I'm not using the table range i'm just using the range name i gave it the uh, criteria i'm going to ignore what's suggested here because i'm on a new sheet it's going to be ship city and the copy to range is on cities and it's going to be ship city so i click unique records only and click ok so here we've got a unique listing of each city so what i would do in code is having been given the unique listing of each city, I would then iterate over each of these cities and create an output report. Let's do that manually just so you get the idea. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to create another ship city criteria, but I could also just reuse the one in A1, but for neatness, I'm not going to do that. Here's the algorithm. The code would do file, new workbook, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get our report here and go back to the ship city. I'm going to paste in the extract range. So if we go back to cities, imagine that you've got a loop going over this data. So what I do now is I click on Las Vegas, paste it into the criteria area. And in this instance, I am going to range name this just to make things a little bit simpler. So name manager, I'm going to create a new one 
and it's going to be criteria and the scope is going to be on I'm on cities cities and the range is going to be these two rows here d1 to d2 okay so there's our criteria so I'm going to close that and now I'm going to do the advanced filter is going to be advanced filter I got a, that's one funny error that comes up if you're clicked if you're clicked on either the criteria or the extract or some data excel gets confused because it thinks that you think that's the database so i know that's not the database okay so i'll click off of that so click on an empty cell click advanced filter copy to another location so the source area the source data is in the sheet data exclamation mark or bang whichever you call it data and the range name is database and the criteria it's already given at d1 to d2 but we're copying it to the new spreadsheet so i'm going to go view switch windows and book two which is this one here so this is our extended range now when i click ok we should have a report of las vegas cities sorry of las vegas orders so if i go ok and that's another thing one has to remember that i just quite forgot you've got to do the advanced filter from the target range which is easy in a macro so let's do it again i'm on the target range i'm going to do data advanced filter so copy to another location so the copy to location is going to be here the criteria range is in this sheet here and the data range is going to be in this workbook here book one data database that's the range so if i now click ok we have our list of las vegas orders now what you would do with your macro is you would do a save as and i just do like save as and you would give it the name from this which would be las vegas so the next stage of the process is the cursor would move to the next element in the list. Now this could be in an array or it could be on the spreadsheet and it would write the New York value into New York, which is what I've just done, I think, earlier. You would do advanced filter. It wants to know what the copy to location is. It's got that. The criteria range is on this sheet here, criteria, and the data range is, as again, data and database. And we click OK, and we should now have records for New York. Save that as New York. And again, cursor would move to Portland. And this is the last manual example. I'm giving you Portland. Advanced filter, source range is database, data, database. Criteria range is again on the source sheet, which is here. And it knows that the extract range is here. So if I do OK, so we're going to do Portland and these are the shippings to portland etc 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 this is actually quite powerful you can build some really cool reports with this kind of a system especially when you have it looping in a macro